Hello, welcome to our signature segment, See the Stories on the Three Hour News Show. Now, in today's discussion, um, as you heard before, we will talk about a crucial issue that often goes unnoticed, but certainly you felt it, yet has a profound impact on millions of adults. Childhood trauma. Childhood trauma can occur when a child witnesses or experiences an adverse event that makes them feel threatened, unsafe, or unable to cope. Many people assume that we forget or outgrow trauma, but the truth is that experiencing trauma in childhood can lead to mental struggles that affect a person's entire life. Research shows that 40% of adults with mental health issues have a history of significant childhood trauma. Well, when it comes to this particular issue, a lot of uh, sources would actually um, talk about it from the psychological side. Yes. But what we don't know is our body is also reacting mm -hmm. to this certain kind of issue. Uh, today, we were going to talk about the biological effects of childhood trauma instead of the psychological side and how it affects our mental health as adults with molecular biologists. I know this is not... Uh, common. Um, please welcome Riza Arif Pudrando. Riza, thank you so much for joining us. Thank You're you. Welcome. So, um, this particular issue would uh, usually be um, discussed from the psychological standpoint. But from a biologist's perspective, can you explain how, further how childhood trauma uh, would affect mental health as an adult? Okay. Well, thank you for the opportunity, but Maybe we can just discuss it first from the historical aspect. Mm. Okay. You know, uh, trauma came, uh, came from the word Greek. Mm. It means trauma mm. with O. Mm. Okay. Meaning wound. Mm. So from 1684, it was used to identify physical illness, mm. physical in the body. But since 1880, it was used actually to define as well psychological illness. Mm. So now we know that trauma affect more physical and also psychological uh, illness yep. in, in the body and also in mind. So from the point of view of biological perspective, you know, uh, if we talk about trauma, we cannot forget about stress. And also the other one, mm. what we call uh, depression. Mm. So, so these three words should be differentiated. Mm -hmm. So stress normally came or comes from external impulses, mm -hmm. but trauma comes from external event. So event meaning, oh. you know, stress is one, one impulse, uh -huh. but okay. trauma is many impulses okay. that become one event. Okay. For example, you have an accident. It's many, many impulses, right? Mm -hmm. You see people looking at you, you see your arm wounded, etc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So depression is more biological and also uh, environmental effect. Mm -hmm. So meaning that you have it in your gene mm -hmm. or some people, you have uh, someday that it will, will come to, to become a depression and also the effect of environmental, it's more complex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But if we talk only about trauma, we can sit back and also trying to think about how our brain develops since our birth. Mm -hmm. So since our childhood, our brain developed until the age of 25. Mm. So, yeah. yeah. At the age of 25, our brain can differentiate what good, what is good and bad. Mm -hmm. We can differentiate uh, what perspective we should have. Mm -hmm. It can also shape our mindset. And so it takes a lot of a long time to mm. develop our brain. So you can imagine at the early development of brain, for the age of one year to ten years, it is the critical uh, point of view. Actually. Okay, so okay. all the way until the so twenty. All the way until the twenty-five. So if you have a trauma in the span of ten first years, yeah, you will have a trauma for your entire life. Mm -hmm. So oh. because it shapes your mindset, it shapes your perspective, the way you see things. Mm -hmm. The first trauma. Mm -hmm. how big it is, or it was, it can shape how you can see the next trauma. 
you, can, you, I, you understand? Yes, yeah. so, yes, yes. So when you have a, a, a very hard trauma at the beginning of mm -hmm. your life, mm -hmm. you will have it. You can you you, you will, will carry. Shape, yeah, yeah, you will carry it, and it will shape how you see the future problems. Uh, the problems that actually will not be a trauma for me, but yeah. for you, Hans, maybe. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that kind of thing in the biological aspect, because why our brain shaped by eighty six uh, billion neuron cells or mm -hmm. nerve cells. So this nerve, what what they hold on right there. Yeah. Sixty eight billion. Eighty six. Sorry, eighty six billion. Yeah. That's a lot. That's a lot. Yes. That's okay. a lot in this, in this tiny shape of brain. Yes, yes. Yeah. So what they do, or the way they did, they try to reconnect one another. Mm. Okay. That's why our mindset, me, you, all of three of us, has different mindsets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if this mindset, at the beginning of life, trauma can happen and can reshape those mm -hmm. connections, and then it will shape, for example, for me, I get uh, uh, beaten by, uh, I don't know, by a dog, by a let's dog, say. Dog, an insect, mm -hmm. something, I can be very, very angry, mm -hmm. but you not. Because maybe in the, in the first beginning 10 years of my life, mm -hmm. I have uh, facing many dogs in my mm -hmm. life, mm -hmm. for that's example. Right. That's right. So oh. I think from the point of view of biology, the connection between the cells in our brain and also how we shape the, the mindset on mm -hmm. our perspective, seeing things and seeing events. Mm -hmm. When it comes to trauma, life, come, yeah. that's, could, okay. that could actually uh, different from one to another. Yeah. But then again, I have to remind our viewers that we are not trying to find any solution to anything, but uh, we just want to know, uh, we need to understand how our brain uh, biologically working uh, when it reacts to this. Yeah. yeah. Again, so again, um, the, the first 10 years of any anyone's life is most important yeah. to shape our brain and mm. the way it works. Okay. Um, okay, so now we want to know what mental health issues are most commonly associated with childhood trauma and can you explain the connection? Okay, so actually when we're talking about trauma and the connection of mental health, mm -hmm. we can measure it into three types of uh, effect. What we call in the biological aspect is 3B. Mm -hmm. The brain, okay. the body, and behavior. Yeah. Mm. The most common that you can see from someone having a mental health issue is the behavior. Mm. The one that psychiatrists and also psychologists try to see it. Yeah. But from the perspective of biologists like me, we see it beyond. Right. The body, the cells, for mm. example. The connection between the brain, you can see it by creating a brain images like mm. MRI and, and mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. of uh, technological aspect that they can do to that. But what can we say about this connection is that when you have a problem in yourself, for example, in your connection that def define your mindset and your perspective, it can be seen by your behavior. So for example, most easily trauma that can be shown by people is irritability. Mm. So you get angry a lot, mm -hmm. okay. have uh, you snap easily, snap easily okay. cry easily. Okay. So when we say easily, it's not easy to quantify as a scientific perspective. Mm -hmm. Why? Because it's people has also the tendency to retract, you know, to try to hide it. Oh. Be because uh, trauma cannot be seen. We, we, we are all agree in, in, in scientific effect, uh, aspect is that uh, trauma is not visible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But you can measure it if you go to the laboratory. But most of people having trauma, they don't want to go to the laboratory. Okay, so let me stop you there because you were, uh, you were, you were saying about uh, how it can be seen through MRI. Yeah. So that means like uh, something uh, in the images of a brain. Yes. Let's say so. Each mental health issue, let's say, I don't know, bipolar, schizophrenia, you know, things like that, and also uh, some other mental health issue can be seen from the image of MRI. Yes. Oh. Can ah. be seen. Okay. Oh. Can you give us example? Let's say we we uh, compare. The, the image of a brain with schizophrenic, uh, schizophrenia and a mm. brain with uh, bipolar, let's say. Yeah, may maybe I can give you a much easier example. Mm. There was a research done 30 years ago using a brain image, MRI, mm -hmm. of a, a young kid, mm -hmm. three years old, mm -hmm. being neglected by the, the parents mm -hmm. and being loved by the parents mm -hmm. for one year. So the age three years, mm -hmm. so being loved one year and unloved for one year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We can see the shrink 
of the size of the brain. Oh. Easily, using okay. MRI. It's a ter about 30% shrinking. Meaning that the connection between those cells in the brain has been reduced by, by, by the brain itself. Oh my God. God. So that is uh, one of a uh, very hard example yeah. that you can see how a mental issue can be driven by a trauma. Because being neglected is one source of trauma. Mm. Mm -hmm. You, For example, your kid comes to you, Daddy, I would love for you to see my painting. But yeah. You neglect it. Mm -hmm. yeah. One. And you did it again and again and again for one year. Yeah. And then you have that brain of those kids being shrinking. Yeah. Oh. So I think that is a, one of good examples. Okay. All right, so, um, well, this is very eye-opening. Yeah. So um, the, the development, it's not easy for, uh, for, you, for, for people to actually raise kids. Yes. Okay. <laughs> right. It's not easy. Yeah, not, it's not, not, every, easy. not every day we can be like, okay, let me see your painting. Yep. So, some days are not <laughs> like that, right? So now, but when you say that, now it's like a, a little reminder for, for me too. But uh, what I want to know as well is, um, I don't know, this is uh, not measurable, but I just want to know, what are some of the worst childhood traumas that are most disruptive uh, to the um, uh, development of the brain? Mm. Is it uh, negligence yeah. or um, physical abuse, mm -hmm. um, sexual trauma or, or what? And what mental health issue does it lead to? Okay, wow. The question actually can be answered in two hours of <laughs> Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> See, but I will try to yes. simplify yeah, it. Yeah, yes, yeah, please. So basically, uh, it's like you have one river. Yeah. There's those yeah. river, you put a red color on the water. Yeah. And then the water is turning into red. But yeah. actually, the rivers can go to many, many directions. Yeah. Only few directions that can flow with the red color and the other one is still normal. Logical, example. yes. So those mental diseases or mental health that can be shown is actually very complex because in the way, uh, during along the way of uh, people's life, mm -hmm. many, many events happen yeah. in their life. Mm -hmm. It can direct the color into all directions mm -hmm. or maybe into only into some. Mm -hmm. But mostly the mental health that can be generated from trauma it's, it's like, uh, yes, you can mention depression is one of the most common. Mm -hmm. Schizophrenia, we don't know, mm -hmm. because it's quite complex, mm -hmm. related to the genetics, bipolar as well. Mm -hmm. But mostly people with trauma having a huge amount of fear in them, in, within themselves. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So this huge amount of fear can be translated into anger as well, mm -hmm. can be translated into Depression, anxiety, anxiety, okay, overthinking, mm. yeah. overthinking, and anxiety is one of Pretty. the most common oh. actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, it, it, it can be many, many things. Oh my God! Now, <laughs> this is getting very... more. I, 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 love how you dumb it down for us. Yeah, but, thank you. <laughs> but uh, this is something that we were not aware of. Yeah, definitely not. But um. So, so we also want to know, so a recent study finds yeah. that a childhood trauma can lead to disruptions in two main regions yeah. of the brain. Um, the default mode network and the central executive network. Now, obviously, we yeah. don't know much about it. Mm -hmm. so yeah. We just you, read about it. Yeah. 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 So can you please tell us more about that? Okay, so uh, the study was actually being done in Australia in 2023 mm. for approximately more than 56,000 children Whoa, as a participant a yeah but the sample itself is actually 1.8 million people ranging for the age of 5 to 85 oh so they measure the effect of those trauma mm -hmm. during a life of a person mm -hmm. so when you can see their actually conclusive remarks is that they found two brain area that can be modulated by trauma Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what we call the first one is DMN, mm -hmm. the default mode network. Mm -hmm. It's the one that when we are sitting in our bathroom, mm -hmm. sitting in our couch, watching mm -hmm. television, but mm -hmm. we are not actually watching it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just sit down there, yeah. reading something 
with, with which one we are actually not reading it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I, that is the default mode network. Okay. It's the one that you have many, many ideas, mm -hmm. relaxing, mm -hmm. etc. And the other one is the uh, CEM, the Central Executive Network. So I will, I will use the, the abbreviation. So the okay. DMN is when we relax, mm -hmm. the CN is when we are active right, right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. You're thinking what I'm saying. Yeah. Yes. You are analyzing what he is saying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking I should take that road, not this one, because this one leading to the Bhutanian is a quite traffic jam. So yeah. this is CEN. That one is CEN. Okay. okay. When you have trauma, you put a lot of pressure to the CEN. So the CEN reduces. The, mm -hmm. This one DMN, this one CN. So the DMN is going up. So when it's going up, but actually you should be relaxed, mm -hmm. but the brain in the DMN, when you have trauma, fill with many thoughts. So what we have here is anxiety, overthinking, in a psychological language, we call it rumination. Mm. Mm. Did I say it right? What I say to Han, oh man, I should say it more politely to him. Oh. You're thinking a lot. Like yeah. When you should be relaxing. Yeah. So the DMN is actually when you relax, it's like when you taking a bath, you're singing something mm -hmm. and then suddenly you have ideas. Yes. Oh, many ideas. Yeah. That should be happen when you have a normal DMN. But when yeah. you don't have that normal DMN, when, even when you're taking a bath, you're thinking a lot oh. of things. So can, can we say it, it, the trauma could actually make those two particular states mm -hmm. dysfunctioning? Mm -hmm. We can call it imbalance. Imbalance, mm -hmm. okay. Because DMN, and CN should be connected by what we call salience network, the SN. Uh -huh. The salience is like a, like a puppet, yeah. modulating both. Okay. The, 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 both of those networks will never have going up together oh. because it's going to be too much for the brain. Yeah. The so brain feeding on energy. Right? It goes one it goes or like another. It, has to be. Oh. it goes When you have trauma, it goes like this. Uh. Okay. For normal people having normal day, mm. yeah. it should be like this, oh, modulating. Okay. okay, so Riza, can you hold yeah. it over there? Yes. Because <laughs> this is getting more interesting, yes. and also we are trying to understand more about it, the things that we haven't known before, mm -hmm. yeah. that child trauma could actually affect you biologically and also molecularly. Yeah, if, right. I, if that's a word. <laughs> that's right. So we're going to take another break. But after the break, we'll continue our discussion about the biological effects of childhood trauma. Stay tuned.